Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. It's been a little longer since my last video than it usually is, but that is because I really wanted to make sure that I gathered my thoughts properly before making this video. And that is because this video is going to be my review of the second closed beta of the Cycle Frontier. Now, before I can actually do a review, I, I need to get it out there. What perspective I am going to be reviewing this game from it, which is the perspective of an average casual gamer. Um, content creation is not my main job and I do work a full-time job next to all of this so I don't have all that much time to grind the game super hard put super many hours into it and just unlock everything after two weeks of playing and then just run around in giga armor and be a giga chat sadly that is not how my life works right now so that is not the perspective I can review the game from. There's probably plenty of other channels out there that can give you a review from that side of the game. But my look on it is going to be from the average casual gamer that, you know, gets home after a day of work, logs into the game, gets a couple of hours in, and then needs to go to bed because he's got to go to work again the next morning. I think that is a big part of the actual gaming community, and the only difference with me is just that I turn on a camera and I stream it on Twitch. By the way, you should definitely check out my Twitch channel. The link is down below. I did the same thing at the end of Closed Beta 1, which was make a kind of a review video of what I thought was good, what was bad, what needed to be changed, and what would be good for the game moving forward. And I'll be referring to that video and a couple of the things that I talked about in that video in this one as well. Um, because some of those are things that have drastically been improved upon and some of them are actually still in a rather similar state so but we'll dive into that later on in the video let's get started and let's take a look at some of the great improvements that jaeger has made going from closed beta 1 to closed beta 2. now the first big thing for me is the overall feel of the movement in closed beta 1 the movement felt kind of slow and sluggish with stamina running out way too quickly and for way too many reasons and in closed beta 2 the movement to me has felt pretty damn good you have enough stamina especially when using the tactical armor to successfully move around in fights which is especially important when outnumbered and they also have balanced out the amount of stamina being used by actions like mining jumping vaulting and to me this is probably one of my favorite improvements going from close beta 1 to close beta 2. It all just feels a lot smoother. It feels like the flow is a lot better with it. And all in all, I think it's a great improvement. And I don't really have any more qualms with this right now. The second topic I want to touch on is the crafting system this beta. They've clearly been playing around with it, balancing it, balancing the crafting cost. And I think that the current state and the price of things feels pretty good and feels pretty logical as well. One thing I would like to see return, however, is monsters dropping heads to be used for helmet crafting, which makes more sense to me than some of the other materials that are required right now. It also just felt nice thematically and it would be insane if they would model the helmets after the base head that you're using for it. For example, green helmets would be modeled after a Strider's head, blue would be modeled after a Rattler, purple after a Jeff, and so on and so on. This would also fix another problem that the game currently has in my opinion and that is being able to gauge how geared someone is from a distance. In the current state of the game the only way to know what armor somebody is wearing is by shooting them. And of course when you shot a person you're in a fight. It would be nice to have some indication before starting a fight about what is this guy wearing, should I take this fight, yes or no, because as soon as you fire the first bullet, well, shows on the road. I think this is something that is especially important as a solo player and I think it could help balance the solo versus squad situation um, that also has been one of the issues during this beta. The biggest issue that I have with crafting right now is the same issue that I had with it back in closed beta 1, aka the fact that you can only craft one item at a time unless you're willing to boost it with either K-Marks or Orm. K-Marks I can understand, but Orm for me leans a little bit too much into the pay to win aspect because that is going to be the premium currency. And I honestly think that the fastest way to destroy the game would be to lean too hard into the pay to win aspect as this is simply something it's it's been shown time and time again. Gamers hate pay to win. As soon as people think a game is pay to win, 
there's a good chance that your game is not going anywhere. And I would hate to see this happen to a game like The Cycle Frontier that has so much potential to be such a hit in the genre. The fact that Aurum is also being used to ensure gear makes this even worse, as it makes the impact of the premium currency simply too big in my opinion. You can have way too much benefit just by spending money. You can speed up things and have good gear faster and it makes it easier for you to get good gear back. And I do completely understand that if this game is going to come out as a free to play title, that the devs do need to make money to make sure that they can keep updating the game and stuff like that. But I strongly hope that they look at other avenues of doing that. Here's my take on how to fix this and the added bonus is that it also fixes the most boring part of the private quarters upgrade. I'm specifically talking about providing more crafting slots, not just being able to craft one item at the same time, but being able to craft multiple items at the same time. Right now, when you're building on your private quarters, it has an entire tree that is dedicated to just speeding up the quarter upgrades, which is, in my opinion, pretty bland, boring, and just not efficient to do. I know that I skipped it all beta. I never touched that tree whatsoever. I would personally love to see them replace these upgrades with unlockable crafting slots and other bonus things for the crafting system. Off the top of my head, I would think things like uh, by unlocking this thing, you will have X percent chance of not using one crafting material. For example, if um, an item you're crafting costs five radio equipment, you have a 5% chance of it costing one less or something like that. I'm just throwing something up in here. If you guys have any good ideas about this, just drop them down below in the comments. All right, and then it's time to stop dancing around the elephant in the room and the subject that we can't avoid when reviewing a game like this, the gunplay. I'll tell you guys how I experienced the gameplay and the gunplay from my casual average gamer perspective. Early on in the beta, when everyone's at a lower faction level, gunfights felt pretty okay to me and felt pretty fun. Everyone was using white weapons and armor with occasionally some scrappers and some manticores and fights felt pretty good, pretty fair and occasionally balanced. However, the later into the beta, the more I started falling behind players who were able to put in more hours than me. Now, don't get me wrong, I 100% agree that putting in more time should have appropriate rewards and one of those is having badass guns at your disposal. However, I feel like the balance is still, even after the last gun balance patch, completely out of whack. And I'm not just talking about higher tiers of guns being too strong, doing too much damage, because if it was only that, I'd be okay with it because those guns also cost a ton of K marks. One of the problems with the gun balance right now, in my opinion, is the existence of the overpen system. When you overpen, which basically means you have more pen than you would need to get through an armor that you're shooting at, you get bonus damage, which basically doubles down on the advantage that a high tier gun has against lower geared players. Those lower geared players have even less of a chance of winning this fight because the kill potential and the kill threat of the guy with the better gear is even higher than you would expect it to be. The other problem with gun balance right now is that we're still in the exact same meta as we were in in closed beta 1, aka the SMG meta. The Brute and Flechette still are the strongest guns in the game at both close, medium and semi long range. Like this is especially true for the Brute because I've seen a ton of clips where people just get sniped from miles away by a Brute with a 2x scope on it and that is just simply not something that should be happening because that is not what an SMG is for. This also makes it that it's very hard for assault rifles to find a place in the game uh, because if you have the AR and your opponent has a similar level SMG, odds are that the SMG will win out in a straight up duel because of the faster fire rate and the easier to handle recoil. This would be okay if it was only happening at close and close to medium range, but the way it is right now, this will even happen at semi long range to long range as well. Just as long as the gun has a decent scope on it, an SMG will win at long range as well, and this just simply shouldn't be a thing. In my opinion, SMGs need to be tuned down to be less effective at medium to long range without losing the possibility to be the kings of close to medium range combat. Now it feels we've been harping on the game quite a lot, which is actually not something I want to do because I still love this game and I have definitely enjoyed most of my time in the beta. So let's balance it out and let's talk about something positive as well. One of the things I think they did an amazing job with is the weight system. I remember back in close beta 1 when you took a white backpack into a raid and you just dropped all of your stuff in it. Uh, you took your, your ammo for the two guns that you were taking in. You maybe took a grenade. You took some stims with you. More than half of your backpack was full just with the gear that you were taking in. 
they've been fiddling with the weight system and i think they are moving in the right direction here it feels way more satisfying if they're after having a big fight and picking up a bunch of loot it's way more satisfying to be able to pick up more stuff and not having to make tough choices of what to leave behind and what to take with you of course there's still an element of that which is great there definitely should be that element but we are definitely coming from a time where we were not able to pick up enough stuff after a fight. Now, I'm still a fan of adding an extra utility item and a fourth gear slot that would serve as a separate pouch for meds and ammo. But right now, I'm just happy that putting that starter setup together does not take more than half of your bag. Another great thing that they added into closed beta 2 is the campaigns for each of the factions. Personally, I love the idea and I think they're a great tool if they are used to act as a sort of a tutorial for newer players to teach you where to find certain items. And I also like the fact that they give you more of a backstory for the factions, which makes the game feel more alive and more immersive. I do, however, think that they still require some work as some of the rewards for the campaign quests are very lackluster or you get them at a point where they really don't matter anymore. Also, some of the campaigns feel a little weird as the progression feels off. One moment you're farming super basic stuff and then for the next twist you suddenly need a pretty rare item that requires a pretty specific way to farm it and things went from 0 to 100 really fast. I love the idea of these campaigns leading into big rewards like unlocking the things that you need to call down a laser drill and I think that this is a great idea to add some longevity to a wipe but I think that there is still some work to be done in smoothing these out. And then of course there's one more thing that we should probably talk about and that has been the rampant infestation of cheaters uh, during this beta. I think one of the things if Jaeger wants to make this game into an absolute smashing success is that anti-cheat should be something that they are putting a lot of chips into because the game is going to come out free to play which we all know means that cheaters will have a very easy time just getting new accounts they'll, they'll just find ways around bans and ip bans and hardware bans and all that stuff they'll find ways around it and they'll just keep coming back because well accounts are free this means that Jaeger really needs to be on top of their game when it comes to the anti-cheat system. And I, I hope they will be because this is another one of those things if early on when the game in the game's existence cheaters run rampant, this could also be horrible for the game's longevity. Now, we don't have to be too pessimistic about this because of course there is a big difference between the Cycle Frontier and games, for example, like Escape from Tarkov, it's going to be a lot harder for RMT to be a thing in this game. Like real money trading is going to be hopefully less prevalent because it's just not going to be that easy to do and it's not going to be that available. Like, for example, the only way that I could think that you could go to a website and buy certain items or certain weapons off there is if somebody drops in with you, they drop you all the gear but then you still need to get out with it. So that is not a good business model for real money trading. The only thing I can see happening with cheaters is that they will just power level accounts and then be selling accounts with everything unlocked. And I hope we just don't get to see too much of that because that would honestly just ruin the entire progression of the game. All right, there you go. Those are kind of like my ideas, my review of this game and the state it's in right now and a couple of my ideas of what I would like to see or what I what changes I would like to see to the game. I would love for this video to be a spot where um, a, a good discussion about this can start. So feel free to put your ideas in the comments down below. Feel free to discuss them. Feel free to drop by my Twitch stream as well to discuss them over there. And if you're liking the content, as always, consider subscribing to the channel we will definitely be making more videos when the cycle frontier finally comes out if there's any big news in between um, now and the point where the cycle frontier releases i will definitely be making videos about that as well and for those of you who are wondering what the future of the youtube channel will be going out from here i am going to be starting a blind elden ring playthrough on my twitch channel this upcoming week and the extra thing that i will be doing is it will have chat interaction so there will be um, dixper cards if you guys know that if you don't know that drop by the stream and i will tell you everything about it where chat will be able to interact with my character in game and um well screw me over and stuff like that so that should be pretty much should be pretty funny should be pretty good content and i plan on making some youtube videos of the highlight moments of that every week as well 
that is going to be it for this one guys have a wonderful last couple of days of the cycle frontiers close beta 2 and um see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>